We've talked a lot about chargers in the past, but today we're going to talk about power supplies. We have the TP1527 power supplies on the bench. We're going to hook those up in parallel configuration and get you familiar with the wiring that goes along with that. Um, if you look at most chargers, most hobby chargers, um, if they have an internal power supply, it's very limited capability. You're not able to get the maximum power out of your charger until you go to an external DC source. If it doesn't offer a DC source, then you can pretty much assume that the internal power supply is going to meet the, the maximum capabilities of the charger. But in many cases, you have DC leads. You always want to take advantage of those as often as possible, especially out in the field when you want to get max, max charging capabilities. So let's take a look at some of the TP1527 specs to get you familiar. It has dual binding posts with 4mm banana jack outputs. It's switchable between 15 and 27 volts. It has dual 5 volt USB outputs on it. Uh, those are rated for an overall of 2 amps. Uh, one amp each, or if only one's active, you get the full two amps out of the single port. It also has dual auto speed cooling fans, which help a lot with the operating temperature. It's a pretty wide range of 32 degrees Fahrenheit to 150 degrees. It also has a removable power cord, and our ship with the North American power cord. It has some key uh, safety features that you're going to want to look for in, in any power supply that you choose. It has low input voltage protection, overcurrent and over, over temperature protection, as well as short circuit protection. So when we look at the output power of this, it's 300 to 550 watts is what it's listed as. 300 watts at 15, 550 at 27. Um, why would you switch between the modes or why would you need anything as high as 27 volts? The first thing you're going to, want to do is make sure that your charger can handle higher voltages. Uh, most of the hobby chargers out there, most of them, will handle between 12 and 15 volts DC on the input side. When you get into the larger chargers, pro competition chargers, and higher cell count chargers, you're going to find that it requires a certain amount of input voltage in order to charge the cell count. So we'll use a couple of examples. Um, for 12 to 14.9 volts, you can charge up to 7S LiPos or 21 cell nickel metal hydrides. Once you go beyond uh, 8S, or you go to, to beyond 7S, you now need, need a higher input voltage. So you have 15 to 19.9 volts uh, on the input side. And then as you go beyond uh, 9S, you're looking at 20 to 24 volts to charge up to a 14S. So if you're only charging 3S batteries, you're only charging uh, you know, maybe 6S batteries for helicopters or other fixed wing applications or, or service applications, those are typically down in the lower cell counts, your 12 to 15 volt setting is going to pretty much meet most of those requirements. Once you jump into the higher cell counts, you're going to need to switch over to your 27 volt. But keep in mind, if your charger is capable of handling higher voltages, like the 800 or the uh, TP820 CD, uh, its uh, acceptable input voltages are 10 and a half, as low as 10 and a half volts, all the way up to 28 volts DC. The reason we want to take advantage of that is because we think about our calculation of, of uh, resulting amps. That's a derivative of watts divided by volts. So if I'm supplying it with 27 volts, uh, it now has much higher amperage capabilities on the charging side. So for example, at, at uh, 15 volts, 300 watts, divide three, uh, 300 by 15, we get 20 amps for the charger. Same thing with 550 divided by 27. So we can say that this is a 20 amp charger, but to say that it's 20 amps and this is a 20 amp charger, or 20 amp power supply, 20 amp charger, that all comes down to what types of cells you're charging in terms of what your output amperage are, is, and it also uh, depends on the charger's capabilities as well. So if you aren't completely confused, the easy way to consider it is look at the wattage handling of your charger and then size your power supply accordingly. Everybody gets caught up in amperage. How many amps can it pump out? That all depends on voltage. So let's look at the wattage output. This is an 800 watt charger. This has uh, 300 watts at 15 volts, 550 watts at 27 volts. So this has a capability of 800, dual port. You can easily uh, accommodate that with a couple 6S batteries at high charging rates. So we're going to look at taking advantage of the fact that we can parallel these two power supplies. So let's get familiar with the connections first, and then we'll go through the, the, uh, the wiring. On the back of the, the uh, 1527 power supply, uh, we've got our dual binding posts, and these are bound on the inside. So if you look at this, this is one unified bus. These two negatives are tied together. These two positives are tied together. We also have our switchable uh, voltage, 15 volts, 27 volts. Right now it's over in 27 volts. There's our USB output, again, total of one amp between the two. And we've got one of our cooling fans. If we sw switch the unit or flip the unit around, we can see the front side uh, where our power connection comes in, our second cooling fan, and also our switch. So when we look at connecting these in parallel, this allows us to, to go from a 20, two 20 amp power supplies to one 40 amp power supply running either 15 volts or 27 volts. Um, in the, the examples we have on the bench, we've got a 1430C and an 820CD. Uh, these are both capable of handling the, the 27 volts input. So we're going to go ahead and leave it in 27 volts. You want to make sure both of them are switched over to identical voltages. And then what you're going to do is stack them. And you're going to bind, uh, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to put a, a binding post 
uh, between the two terminals. Now, the easiest way to think of this is if these two negatives are identical, these two positives are identical, these two negatives and these two positives, all we need to do is bridge these two connections over. A couple different ways we can do that. Um, outside jumper, took some 12 gauge wire, which I'd highly recommend, and it's recommended for this configuration. Don't go any smaller than uh, 12 gauge. And if you're new to the hobby, or you're new to this wiring process, um, AWG numbers are, you know, the lower the number, the thicker the gauge, the higher the number, the thinner the gauge. So a 16 or 18 gauge wire is thinner than a 12 gauge. We've got 12 gauge here, it'll handle our 40 amps just fine. Easy way to do it is to go ahead and use this outside jumper. Uh, we'll just go between the positive and the positive to the negative to the negative. I mean, you keep your polarity the same. This is not series, this is parallel. So we're going to do, um, I'll put that down below, uh, negative to negative and positive to positive. And all we've done is bound these two together in a parallel configuration, which effectively uh, means our circuit begins here, ends down here with a, a cumulative 40 amps available, or combined 1,100 watts of, of charging power. So uh, with this configuration, we can connect two chargers. We've got two sets of binding posts available. The important thing to keep in mind is, as we go through and connect them, uh, this is going to our 1430. If I disconnected them, what you typically do is, is in one power supply, connect to the one terminal set, this is only going to supply 20 amps. We need to bridge between both halves of the circuit in order to take advantage of the fact that we have combined 40. So if I hook two chargers up the way I have the 1430 here and I took the 820 and tied it in, uh, in the lower connections, I would effectively be giving it, I'd gain nothing. I'd be giving it two uh, 20 amp circuits just as I had before. So what we're going to do is actually wire it a little bit differently. We're going to take the 1430s leads, for example. We're going to take the positive at the top. We'll do the negative so the wiring is easier. Negative at the top, and then we're going to bind into the bottom, or plug into the bottom down here for the positive. So now we've connected the 1430 to the upper and lower posts, and we have 40 amps available to it. Same thing with our 820 when we connect that in. We're going to go positive in the top, and then our negative over here in the bottom. So how, now this is how I've connected the two chargers. Both of these chargers will be able to, to see the available 40 amps between the two parallel chargers. Again, make sure your voltages are set the same, but that's the simplicity of the connection. Another route to go to is uh, to make it to where you can connect up to four different chargers would be to uh, remove the jumper that I put in here and go with uh, your own binding posts. Now an easy way to do that is, is I've taken a couple of chunks of 12 gauge wire here and I've stripped it back to where I have, still have protection between the two chargers, but I've got nice posts exposed and allow my binding post to go down uh, pretty deep on the wire. Use 12 gauge wire, tinned them, and wicked the, the uh, solder, the uh, rosin core solder up into the wire, and now I've effectively created two uh, high current bind binding posts. So what we're gonna do is, is take these two binding posts and put them between this post and this post. If we back those out, we'll be able to put those in place and have a lot more connection options when we get finished. So now with the two uh, binders between the upper and lower terminals, I've still created my 40 amp configuration, but I've given myself uh, eight banana jacks to work with, so now I can connect up to uh, four chargers. So that's it, it's a really straightforward process connecting uh, the two power supplies through parallel wiring, and um, uh, you just wanna make sure those voltage settings are on the same exact volt, either 15 or 27. And uh, that's it. You just connect them and power them up. You can power them up uh, one after the other. They don't have to be powered on simultaneously. It won't hurt a thing uh, when you power up the chargers or the power supplies. And typically the procedure is, is, is you power up the power supply source, then connect your charger, then connect your battery. Um, what I've noticed and what we've noticed is that you, there's enough amperage running through as you pre-charge the capacitors in the charger. Uh, that you may get a little bit of sparking at the terminals themselves. Well, you don't want to get a bunch of oxidation and, and, uh, and burn marks on your connectors. So uh, it's fine to go ahead and connect the charger first. Just make sure the batteries are not connected. Connect the charger to your terminals and then power on both your power supplies. And it'll, it'll avoid the sparking that goes on. Um, uh, other than that, we've run these for, through the summer months. It, uh, I think the hottest day we've had is about 95 degrees. And um, the fans got a little loud on them, but they stayed nice and cool. Um, and they, they're also rated, they're rated at you know 20 amps as we had, as we'd factored out based on the wattage. And if you take into consideration drop metric across your wiring and from a resistance on your uh, charger itself, and uh, all of the considerations once you wire and connect a charging device, you're going to get about 19.2, uh, 19.4 RMS uh, um, uh, amps out of these out of these power supplies. 
that's totally fine and normal. In cooler temperatures, temperatures it would be closer to your 20 amp as things heat up even though it's cooling it down and pulling down the internal temperature and it'll still operate. You can expect that the output is going to reduce just slightly. Not a lot, maybe a couple amps at the most, um, but that's normal. Any, any electrical circuit as its heat increases, its output capabilities uh, diminish. So your chargers will do the same exact thing. So it's always good to keep these in as cool a place as possible. But uh, otherwise, very simple, very straightforward connections. Uh, if you'd like more information on the TP1527 power supplies, you can go to thunderpowerrc.com. If you'd like more information on power supplies and chargers and charging methodologies and termination methodologies and all those great things, you can go to tobefly.com and check our knowledge base. There's a lot of information out there. I'm Kurt with Two Brothers Hobby. Thanks for watching.